this wonderful collection of vegetables here, uh, so different from each other, a pointed cabbage, some broccoli, some cauliflower, uh, kohlrabi, they're actually all derived from the same wild species. They are all the product of selection by centuries, maybe millennia of uh, work by plant breeders, gardeners, people who just knew what they liked and knew what they wanted to, 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 to eat, taking cabbages and things that look like cabbages and shaping them just by, by selecting the kinds of uh, plants that they liked and breeding from those. But back in Roman times, the Romans knew maybe three different species of cabbage or different kinds of cabbage. They were all uh, varieties of the wild kind. So it's probably in the last 2,000 years or so that this whole range um, has evolved. And just look how much variety you can get out of something as unpromising as a wild cabbage plant. A wild cabbage plant would look like just a few of these leaves sort of on the ground like that. Here's one uh, that's been selected to have a very tight bud and then this, this uh, pointed shape. Um, it's also much more edible than the wild cabbage would be. If you would eat a wild cabbage, it's bristly and it's very bitter. So this is, of course, delicious. This is kohlrabi. And here you can see that the leaves, they're not much, you won't want to eat those. This is the stem. And that hugely enlarged stem is, again, the result of selection, but in a different direction. So somebody who thought that would make a good vegetable had different ideas and over time, maybe over many generations, produced something quite different. Um, and broccoli, of course. So here, here you have a transformation of the flowers of, or the flower head of the wild cabbage, which looks nothing special, but to produce this extraordinary head, which again is, is so tasty. Um, and then essentially something similar happened here in the cauliflower and in this Romanesco, this beautiful thing here, which uh, again is an, another kind of selection. So uh, uh, you can also, of course, change uh, the color. So uh, this red color in red cabbage is a pigment called anthocyanin, which is masking the green chlorophyll. So these leaves are green, but there's an overlying uh, red color uh, that's been added, if you like, um, through selection. And all the genes that went to making these differences were present in the wild cabbage populations. There's been some mutation, but largely this is all the result of breeding, reorganizing the genome of these plants, not through genetic modification, but just through selection. Mm.